Okay, guys, we gotta put our trays up for takeoff. Where's Dad? Oh, he's in the back. We could only get three seats together. Daddy has my pillow. Okay, well, we'll get it later. Can you not put your feet up, please? Why aren't we going? I'm not sure, honey. We must be in line for takeoff. Like security? Well, that was a different line. I have to go. We just sat down. But I have to go. The seatbelt sign's on. Why aren't we moving? Hey, you no kicking. Speak. We're just 15 in line for takeoff. Son of a... Don't go there. Go on a real vacation. Go RVing. Thank you for listening to this DuPont Media production, available on all major podcast platforms. This is Rod Peterson on Demand. Absolutely awesome to see you down in Florida, Roddy. Unfortunately, you are at the grind, working. LOL. Enjoy it, man. You deserve it. How about that? Listen, please don't feel sorry for me. Darren, do you feel sorry for me that I got to work? I feel sorry for here? me. <laughs> exactly. From the slurpy capital to the land of the newly wed and the nearly dead, it's sunny Florida with the Rod Peterson Show. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Rick Regan. Happy Thursday, everybody. And welcome to Canada's daytime sports talk show. I prefer the sunshine state, guys. I really do. And if you can believe it's even hotter today than it was yesterday, we continue to broadcast live from the beach house in beautiful and sunny Pompano Beach, Florida. RP here, Moose DuPont, is back in the studio. And there he is. How you doing, Moose? Do you have a sweater on today? <laughs> What's up? I do, yeah. Well, it's only going to be what? Is it going to hit seventy degrees here? Probably not. Ooh. I think it, it was, oh, you know, poor guy, eighteen or nineteen Celsius. I know. So, what happened to the rain? I, you know, we were talking yesterday. It's supposed to be rain in the forecast today. Not the case. Uh, I don't know. It sprinkles like once a day. I found here, and then uh, it's sunshine the rest of the time. But I got to tell you, Moose, before we get into the usual hijinks that we do here, a couple yeah. things going down. Uh, just to open the show, we've got invitations from three different restaurants and sports bars to come and do the show over the next couple of weeks. I thought okay. I would let you know that. That's so good. I'm trying. I, I'm going to write them down. I'm just, you know how I work. Like the bracelet says one day at a time. We'll get through today from the beach house. We're going back to Dodge City Friday. But come next week, I, we've got a, We have a litany of restaurants and sports bars that want to host the Rod Peterson show. And today, Ian, who God willing, will get him on the air here because this dude has got it going on he's like <laughs> he's like hey you guys are bringing business in here canadians like to come to florida and uh and i said well of course and he goes wow listen i'm telling everybody you guys are doing a podcast i'm like dude dude it's on national television on game plus tv across canada he's like no no, no podcast way cooler than that <laughs> so he's got his youtube up and he's watching the show so that's hey they're very tech savvy down here in south florida or florida overall would that surprise you moose not at all that? not at all so that's pretty good yeah they're dialed in well yeah we have a we have a live studio audience up here i like it ian and nina the staff because i don't think they're are you guys open yet for are you open just yeah you can talk it's okay yeah, we're open. it's like it's a theater here yeah, they're, yeah we're open so yeah, heard. yeah they'll get to the uh customers Later on, oh, don't there's a worry. show going on down here. If they Who make some noise, yeah. if they make some noise, we'll hear it. So it's good. Okay. Oh, if they make some noise, you'll hear it. Okay. Well, maybe a little later on. But hey, okay. I guess we should get serious. Um, coming up on the program today, Gareth Reese joining us from the World Rugby Sevens. As you know, hour one of the Rod Peterson Show is brought to you by the World Rugby Sevens and Explore Edmonton coming up this weekend in Edmonton, the City of Champions. We've gone to the birds, guys. We've officially gone to the birds. And uh, coming up in hour two, Scott Flory, the Canadian Football Hall of Famer, head coach of the University of Saskatchewan Huskies football program. He's coming up in hour two. And great work by Clark. We had A.J. Gallant lined up from the Danbury Trashers. And they are point six in my quick six show topics here. The Danbury Trashers, what the, the hockey documentary that's taking Netflix by storm. But the former owner of the team had to reschedule today. So Scott Flory was good enough to slide himself in for hour two to fill in for A.J. Gallant. But as you said, Moose, that'll give all our viewers time if you haven't watched the documentary yet on Netflix to watch it ahead of, I think, Monday, we're going to get A.J. Gallant on. So anyways, Gareth Reese and Scott Flory today. And now, please, can we hit the quick six show topic? Thank you. And I know that we are back on Game Plus television today. So 
people uh, that because we've been preempted all week because of Blast Premiere, the gaming tournament. They're like, what is going on? What's coming out of my television right now? <laughs> Rod is in South Florida down here on an NFL and NHL tour, or as Mo and Slapshot would say, a Southern tour. And <laughs> went to the Dolphins on Sunday, the Dolphins and the Bills. This Sunday, I'm going to the Panthers and the Nashville Predators in a doubleheader. Get to check out the North Palm Beach High School team. Their game Friday night as coached by Deron Carter. Dupes, I just got a lot of sports things going on down here. So anyways, number one, Blue Jays seven, sorry, Rays seven, Blue Jays won last night at the Trop. In the Dome in Tampa, Austin Meadows hit a three-run homer in a six-run third inning, and the Rays clinched a postseason berth with a 7-1 victory over the Blue Jays. The Rays' Kevin Kermeyer was hit by a pitch, apparent retribution for scooping up a Toronto scouting report two days earlier. We all saw the highlights of it if you weren't watching it live. Reliever Ryan Baraki, no relation to our technical producer Ryan Baracko, hit Kermeyer on the back with his first pitch of the eighth inning last night when the Rays led 7-1. Baraki was ejected. Blue Jays manager Charlie Montoya and enraged pitching coach Pete Walker stormed out of the dugout as a play spilled onto the field. Walker also was tossed from the game. The Rays won the series, Moose. They clinched, as I said. It was not good for the Blue Jays in terms of the wild card because both the Red Sox and Yankees one last night, so it was not a good night for the Blue Jays, but you think overall it was a great night for baseball, so please explain. That's an amazing night for baseball. I think, you know, Kermeyer getting plunked and being upset about it, the, the Jays being upset about the scorecard, that whole incident is amazing, and him saying after the game he hopes he plays the Jays, you know, because they shouldn't have plunked him for that, they should get over it. I think bad blood yeah. in baseball is great. I think you get a little rivalry going. I think it's it's good for entertainment. It's great for baseball. It gets you tuned into these games. And Tampa wouldn't traditionally be a hot ball market for, you know, the Jays. Not a big rival, right? If it was the Yankees, the Red Sox, I get it. You know, it's a similar to what we saw with, um, with Odor and the Texas Rangers when Jose Bautista... And Ruin and Odor had their little mix-up, right? Um, that kind of stuff brings people to the ballpark. That gets people out of their seats. I think it's awesome. So I hope the Jays meet the Rays in the playoffs. I hope they talk in the press. Because then we'll talk about it on the show every morning while we have coffee. And then we'll be watching the game at night. So it's great for the, for the, for the ball game. Well, I don't know if it was Kermeyer who said it after the game last night. But we want to see these guys in the playoffs. And I think I can speak for every baseball fan and Canadian in saying, so do we. Uh, anyways, moving on, I've, I'm moving my topics around uh, because I had the Jack Eichel news this morning. And I'll tease you with, you already know this, but Jack Eichel's been stripped of his C in Buffalo. He's been placed on long-term injured reserve. And the grease fire that is the Buffalo Sabres continues. But that's not my number two point. I'm making the CFL my number two point because, oh my gosh, Darren, my phone's just blowing up with football people down here that are loving the CFL coverage because nobody else is giving it in the daytime in Canada nor the United States because uh, here at the Beach House, Pompano, they're saying this is Florida's daytime sports talk show. Just saying that, Moose. I don't think you'll have a problem with uh, <clears throat> with that moniker. Anyways, Hamilton's third-string quarterback, David Watford, picked up his second straight win on a rain-filled night as the Tiger Cats defeated the Ottawa Red Blacks 24-7 at TD Place on Wednesday. The win allowed the Ticats to take sole possession of first in the East. Red Blacks dropped their fifth in a row. They're now one in five. The result marked the 11th straight home loss for the Red Blacks dating back to July of 2019. Watford, our good friend, finished the night 15 to 25 for 115 yards and a touchdown. Listen, maybe he didn't win it, but as we said yesterday, he didn't lose it. And that's all we can ask. It was a rough night on the other side for Ottawa's Dominic Davis. He started at quarterback. He finished the night six for 14 for 50 yards, one pick. Then he was replaced while well, he was hurt. And then Matt Nichols came in early in the third. Nichols was seven for 10 for 68 yards. Then he left the game with seven minutes to go as he appeared to injure his left wrist. Nate Bahar finished the game at quarterback for Ottawa. And if you don't know who Nate Bahar is, he's another friend of the show. He's been on here. He's a Canadian receiver. So I asked you to go, Darren, and do a little homework this morning and check out Arash Madani's Twitter feed and then Bob Irving's. Arash tweeted last night, not a banner night for the CFL or something along those lines. And Bob Irving, the Hall of Fame voice of the Blue Bombers, said, a sad night for the CFL, if I have that right. 
and I didn't watch the end of the game. It was an abomination. It just it wasn't good. But I'll just say this. If they get down to the third string quarterback who happens to be a receiver, that could happen in the National Football League because I believe that they only dress two in the NFL. It could happen. Last year, the Denver Broncos started a DB, a quarterback, as you know, because of COVID protocol to their four quarterbacks. Was it as bad a night for the CFL as Canadians and CFL observers are saying? Well, it wasn't great. And that's not even because they had to put a receiver in a quarterback. You, you just mentioned the Denver Broncos. It's not unprecedented. It's not just only a CFL thing. This happens in the National Football League. Not often, but it can happen. We see it happen in baseball when a shortstop's got to come and pitch because they've ran through all their pitchers, you know, yep. or an outfielder. That's not crazy. That's not that crazy. But 225 passing yards in the football game. Wait, wait, wait. Total combined between four quarterbacks combined for 225 passing yards let that sink in for a second four quarterbacks combined for 225 passing yards that's what's disappointing because we want offense we want to get out of our seat you know we want the big plays and there are big play guys on on these teams and in the Canadian Football League that's what makes it so fun it's electric right there was not a lot electric about that game last night and that's disappointing well look man and I'm making a note of that. Sad night, point two. When's the last time we had a CFL game? And call, you know, call me crazy because I haven't watched all of them, but that has shot the lights out and just been a slobber knocker because we've seen it in the National Football League. The, obviously, the opening night game, 31-29, Buccaneers over the Cowboys. Look at the overtime games. You had one with your Titans last week, and they won yeah. in Seattle, right? Look at the excitement there. Uh, Monday night football, the Raiders and the Ravens last week. Why is this happening in the Canadian Football League? Why is it? I don't have a problem that a receiver's got to come in and play third-string quarterback, and clearly you don't either. You've said it. It happens in other leagues. It happens in other sports that you've got to bring in a utility guy. I, I get that. But what is with the bad CFL games? Because there are issues in the CFL, and I'm – listen, you're on this show with me every day. I'm yeah. going out of my way, Moose, to steer clear of the issues of what I know – there are for the CFL. Obviously, financial issues, COVID issues, all the rest. They're not helping themselves by games like that. So I guess my, again, my question to you is what's the deal with low scoring no big plays in the CFL? And that's never that I can remember. It's never really been the CFL's issue. You know, no matter what the league's, you know, shape is financially, no matter what the business model is, no matter how many fans are in the stands, the CFL's always been you know, for me and a lot of football fans, the most entertaining brand of football, right? Big plays, lots of drama, talk about the final three minutes and, and all that can happen. No lead is safe. You know, big plays, the kick returns, all of that. And it's just, it's been a tough season. And, and that's, you know, you could, you know, probably chalk some of this up to the layoff. You really probably could. There's been some movement. There haven't been on the field a lot. You can, you can chalk it up to that a little bit. But now we're seven games in, right? We're, we're midway point of the season. It's it's time to start seeing some of these things, you know, unfold a little bit and start to see this game because it's not the game that we remember it. At least it wasn't last night. So I've got my comments on. Thank you, Jordan, and you and all the crew for uh, fixing me up with that feed. So William May and Lloyd Minster says lots of key injuries and a whole year off from not playing. So there's that. Uh, boy, they're coming in like crazy. <laughs> now That's asking good. for it. Um Yes, what we want. Uh, John Wyatt watching on Facebook says, inexperienced quarterbacks and heavy rain didn't help the stats from Northside YEG. That's in Edmonton. He says, I didn't watch much of the game, but when I had it on, it was pouring rain. From the general in Calgary, he says, don't be a CFL homer, Rod. LOL. How about that? One minute they're calling me a homer, the next day they're calling me a hater. Welcome to How my life. That? From CD, the Tie Cat fan. He's got the Tie Cats logo as his avatar. He says, Don't care. <laughs> I, you don't care because you won. That's a good point. Right. You'll take I mean, ugly losses over pretty pretty wins anytime. Devontae Dedman did have the kick, the, the touchdown, right? The big return, six, 63 yards, I think it was. And it was raining. I do like mm -hmm. when the weather plays a factor. I, I like the rain and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know what else to say. Um, like I say, just, eh, 
trying to figure out my computer here from Randolph in Ontario. High school teams pass for more than 225 yards combined. Eh, maybe it has something to do with the rain. I don't know. Um, John Kirby in Edmonton says, next CFL season, will we see more Tuesday and Wednesday games like this season? Was there an explanation last night on the broadcast as to why they were playing a Wednesday game in Ottawa, by the way? Because if there was, I missed it. I can't imagine that TD Place was booked for too many other events on the weekend, Moose. But yeah. why? Uh, uh, how are we with Wednesday games in the CFL? I think we said you want to stay away from Thursdays and Sundays if you can in the Canadian Football League, particularly in the fall. Um, I, mean, I don't this, have a problem with midweek games, but that's just no. me. This is staying away from those days. I'm a big, again, I'm a big, I grew up with Friday night football, the doubleheader on Friday nights. That's what I love. Um, but I have no problem with mm-hmm. it. I mean, you're going you're gonna to go to the games if you're a fan of the team. I, I really believe that you'll go to the games no matter what the day is. Again, if you, if you don't want to, you'll say it was because of a Wednesday night game. In reality, it's you just didn't want to go. But um, I had no problem with the game last night, and it was nice to have a midweek game to watch in the CFL. Chris Bird in King City, Ontario says, Madani's post was much less scathing than Irving's. <clears throat> they were both, it appeared, crapping on the CFL. And you kind of expect it from a rash. You don't expect it from Knuckles. So uh, I saw it. You saw it. I don't necessarily know yeah. what they meant. But anyways, uh, life goes on. We only got a minute or two left here, Darren. And... Uh, as you know, i got a million screens going on here, so bear with me. This is the warm-up, proudly brought to you by our friends at E. Cole Electric. And when we come back, uh, we'll talk about the Jack Eichel situation and the NHL training camps that are open. But at E. Cole Electric, our annual fall promotion sale is on now with special pricing on hundreds of in-stock items. E. Cole Electric, let's get to work. Darren and I will return after this break and go through points three through six. And they are the NHL and Jack Eichel for the NFL tonight. Carolina Houston. We'll talk about the line. Tom Brady goes into New England next week. They're already talking about that game. And point six more on the Danbury Trashers. So hang around. We'll be right back. You're watching on Game Plus Television nationwide in Canada. 31 states in the U.S. YouTube and Facebook Live and 24-Hour Sports Radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. All right, welcome back, everybody. And if you uh, forgot, the RP Show moves fast. So get your comments in as we roll. The Prairie Mobile text line is open, 306-840-8777. We are broadcasting live from the Beach House Pompano in gorgeous Pompano Beach, Florida. And uh, we'll probably come back on the CFL stuff, but first I promised hockey. We are a hockey nation after all. NHL training camps are open. Most uh, Buffalo Sabres center Jack Eichel failed his pre-training camp physical and was placed on injured reserve this morning, leaving the two sides no closer to a resolution over how to treat a herniated disc, which has sidelined the player for six months. General Manager Kevin Adams said the player has also been stripped of his captaincy. As the Sabres open camp today, the developments leave Eichel being out for the foreseeable future with the growing likelihood the face of the franchise has already played his final game with the team, which selected him number two overall back in 2015. And what has become an ever-widening rift, the Sabres have so far failed in their attempts to trade the five-time 20-goal scorer this offseason. And Eichel, who first publicly questioned his future in Buffalo in May, changed agents last month in hopes to spur a trade. Now... What's today, Thursday? Come Friday, I'm supposed to be hanging out with some of the Panthers people and guaranteed not, if it's not Friday, then Sunday I will for sure because they're playing the Nashville here and I'm going to be at the game. I'll see what they have to say about this, Darren. But what it smacks to me of is the Sabres quite clearly have no idea what they're doing and we're going to have to get Matthew Barnaby on because Barney has, you know, strong thoughts on this, Darren. But his, I screenshotted this. Where's my phone? 
I do love being on location, but sometimes it is a bit of a frazzle. This is from The Athletic, Darren. Jack Eichel, no longer the captain of the Sabres. General Manager Kevin Adams said, I feel the captain is the heartbeat of our team. Sorry, I feel the captain is the heartbeat of your team. I felt that we needed to address that. This all has to do with his neck. And he failed the, the physical, so Kevin Adams is saying, if we have a captain, we want him on the ice. I don't think you strip a guy of the sea well, just because he's hurt. Yeah, I mean... I can see both sides of this. So Kevin Adams also came out and said, he's like, we're not, you know, they're not going to be pressured, right? And they're not going to, uh, I want to pull up the quote here. He's like, we're not going to cave or back down due to pressure. And this is from the Eichel camp for a trade. And if he's disgruntled, well, now teams know that and they think they can get Jack Eichel on a bargain, right? Because he's not a fit in Buffalo. And he doesn't want to play there anyway. So you better get something than lose him for nothing. Um, I get that. Um, I also understand when he says the heartbeat of the team, you can't have a disgruntled player who doesn't want to be there wearing your seat, representing your franchise. The guy who has no intention of being there was publicly said, we're then leaving. Then trade him. And that's the point, right? But, uh, you know, Adams is sitting there probably waiting, trying to get the best deal possible, and it hasn't come yet. How much time does he have? That's up to him. How long is he willing to wait? That's kind of up to him and the organization. But it is a mess. It's a real mess. And I can see it from both sides. He's got to do what's best for the organization. He can't let a player railroad him into making a bad move. That's a big, big, valuable trading piece for the Buffalo Sabres. If they want to get back on track and have a rebuild, Jack Eichel can be the ticket to do that because he can bring back a really nice return. But if you let this sit here and just burn the whole organization to the ground before you do it, What's going to be left when you finally make the trade? Again, moments of truth and clarity that you won't get on any other sports talk show. Can you give me any evidence that Kevin Adams, the general manager of the Sabres, has any clue what he's doing? And fans will say, oh, it's the National Hockey League. He's got to know what he's doing. He's got to be great, right? He's the GM of an NHL team. No. Give me some evidence that he knows what he's doing. When he said we won't be painted into a corner or whatever he said, we won't be pressured. What was the quote? Yeah, we won't cave due to the public pressure or due to the pressure. Yeah, you got a player that doesn't want to play there. You have to trade Jack Eichel. We've been expecting it all summer and now all fall. It hasn't happened yet. And now the kid shows up and fails his physical and they stripped him of of the seat. Listen, I'm sorry. I... I love you, Moose. I can't go along with that. Because what does that say about your faith did the Chicago Blackhawks strip Jonathan Taves of his C last year when he missed the entire season? Can you, did he? But, and if they that, did, I apologize. Right, but that's different a little bit because Jonathan Taves no, no, still wants not. to be he still wants to be a Blackhawk, right? He wasn't in the in the media saying he wanted to leave. But here's the other the flip side of this for me too, though. We're well, arguing Kev- two different things. I know the the flip side for Kevin Adams because I don't think that the stripping of the C is due to him having the uh, failed physical. I really don't. This is about him not wanting to be there, and that's why you take the C away. But when you're dealing with a player like this in, in the public eye, and you're being hard and you're saying, look it, we're not sending you for surgery, we're not giving you the C, we're not just trading you right away because you want to, right? You're doing all of these things against the player, we're not gonna let him pressure us, and it's kind of telling the rest of the league that this might not be a real player-friendly market. This might not be a real player-friendly team, and. How far is that going to go when you're trying to recruit free agents, right? When you're trying to get rookies signed that you've drafted up near the top of the National Hockey League entry draft. So he could have went about this a completely different way and said, hey, look at Jack, I know you're not happy here. I know things aren't working out. Let me see what I can do to make life better for you and I'll find you a trade. And players will see, would see that and think, man, that's a guy, that's a team I might want to play for because they're going to look out for us, even if that means not being in the organization. But he's not doing that. Uh... Uh, Owen Power, number one He's, overall picks, not in camp because he elected, le- elected to stay in Michigan. This is not a franchise anybody wants to play for. Owen He's Power sitting back watching. up the yeah. trade, botched the trade with Jack Eichel. And I'm sorry, I, I, I'll say it again. People think because it's the NHL, you must automatically know what you're doing. And Kevin Adams clearly doesn't know what he's doing. Moving on. Point four of the quick six show topics here in hour one, which is brought to you by Explore Edmonton and the World Rugby Sevens. Uh, NFL tonight, 
Carolina Houston. And it's something early on, Darren. I think it's because it's only week three. I would have normally called this a friends and family game. Only friends and family care. But I was on the radio in North Carolina this morning and they used to call me to talk CFL and NHL. Now they call to talk NFL, just so you know. And the Panthers are favored by eight on the road in Houston. And the over-under is 43. I think the pumpkin shows up. The Uber pumpkin shows up at midnight tonight for the Carolina Panthers and Sam Darnold and the Houston Texans. At the very least, if they don't win, they beat the spread of eight. And I'm taking the under of 43. And be quick on this because I'm going to move on to the Tom Brady thing. But your take on Thursday Night Football. David Mills is starting a quarterback for the Houston Texans. Now he was a highly rated high school Who? football. He was a highly rated high school football recruit ahead of Tua Tunga Vailoa. They liked him at Stanford a lot with his delivery in his arm. But but you said who? Yeah, who? Tyrod Taylor was actually moving the football and doing some really nice things for Houston. And we thought this isn't the basement dwelling Houston Texans we thought they were going to be. They look pretty good. But Sam Darnold's. He's kind of reborn in Carolina. I like the the chemistry he's brought over from New York with Robbie Anderson. And you got Christian McCaffrey. So how can you not take uh, the Panthers in this one? And I'll take him to cover that spread, too. Ryan McCarthy in Saratoga, New York, says, I wonder what the holdup on a trade is for Eichel. Are teams worried they're going to have to wait for Eichel to heal? Or are the Sabres asking for too much? They're asking for too much. Somebody wrote in here, William in Lloyd says you can't trade him until he's healthy. <clears throat> Injured players have gotten traded for years and years and years. You know what you're getting with Jack Eichel. You know, and guys have come back from injuries like that too in the past and, be, and been fine. So they can move him. Kevin Adams just doesn't know how. Uh, so point five, we have not put up a poll question yet because I had a couple of pretty good suggestions. But the jug, you know the jug? Oh yeah. Darren, yep. he texted me this morning. He goes, poll question, poll question idea. Tom Brady, Tom Edward Brady is going into Boston next week, into New England in week four with the Patriots. And the question is, should he be honored with some sort of ceremony, some video tribute? And uh, you would think automatically, yes, he should. But there's been at least one Patriots player that's come out and said that they don't think that they should honor Tom Brady there. Now, we were talking about it here in the Pompano Beach House with the staff before. The, well, look, you don't leave that up to the players. Of course, the players are going to say don't honor Tom Brady. Who wants the visitor honored? Maybe these guys didn't even play with Tom Edward Brady. Right. But does it really mean anything? I mean, Darian Durant got his video tribute when he came back to Saskatchewan with Montreal. But ask Darian how he feels about Saskatchewan still to this day. I don't think it meant a whole lot to him. Now, I, can't, I shouldn't speak for Darian, but I just did. Yeah, you got to have a video. You got you to have something for TB12, don't you? Oh, yeah. You have to. I think so. I mean, what he did for that organization is unlike what anybody's done for any organization. And, you know, what he did in that town, I, I think you do. I think you will. I think you'll have a moment. I think you'll recognize it. Um, I think once he's done, there'll be a statue outside the stadium. If there's not one there already, um, I, yeah, for sure. I think they will. I really do. Um, but then that's uh, going to be a heck of a football game, too. And I, it's too bad we got to wait a whole other week to get there. But, uh, yeah, yeah no. I, I think it's an automatic yes. Slam dunk. Well, the bracelet says one day at a time. You could move it to one week at a time. We shouldn't even be talking about that. But I couldn't think of any other poll questions. So maybe we will throw that up there. But I think it would be 70 to 80% yes. Tom Brady should be honored with some sort of ceremony yeah. next week in New England. By the way... Quite often I say that our viewers know a lot of what they're talking about. Today they're proving they don't know what GD thing, <laughs> as my mom would say. William and Lloyd Minster says, Rod, nothing wrong with taking the C away. Really, William? That shows you what you know, and that's nothing. Having the C stripped off is something that will dog Jack Eichel for the rest of his career. It'll always be. Remember, he had a C stripped in Buffalo. It's one of the most embarrassing things that can happen to a player, which is another reason why I'm upset at the Buffalo Sabres and Kevin Adam. Nothing wrong. William, you obviously have never been in a dressing room. Why don't you stop talking for the day? 
And Ryan Friesen in Winnipeg, who I threatened to block the other day, says Rod Peterson called Andrew Harris a cheater when it came out. No, I didn't. I absolutely never said anything of the sort with Andrew Harris. I was the one that said he should serve his suspension and let's all move on. So if you guys are going to try stir stuff up, take your act somewhere else because I don't need it today. Gareth Reese coming up in hour one from World Rugby Sevens and also Scott Flory from the Huskies football program. He's in hour two. My sixth point in the quick six show topics, Darren, is I don't know the exact name of the documentary. I guess I could find it here on my phone. But if we just say Danbury Trashers, that should be all that we need to know, right? That's it. Where the heck is it? The Netflix series. Well, it isn't untold, untold crime uh, and tr- stories untold or something. Crime, yeah. Crime and penalties, yes. Untold, untold crime and penalties, Clark says? Untold is the series. I got and it. The, uh, yeah, crime and penalties. Okay. Everybody's talking about it. Danbury Trashers. And I know I, I was a little late to the party, but I'm ahead of the pack. Most people still don't know what it is. Right. So if you just go into your Netflix search tonight or today, if you have the time and the means, uh, write in Danbury Trashers and the 90 minute documentary will come up about a United Hockey League pro team from 17 years ago. I think they only lasted two years owned by Jimmy Galante and his son, AJ. And listen, man, first 10, 15 minutes, I'm like, is this even freaking real? Like, I remember the United Hockey League. I had players that played in the United Hockey League, our friends that played in the United Hockey League, but I don't remember the Danbury Trashers. I would have never believed that ESPN would have shown up to their news conference to announce the expansion team, but Darren Ravel was the reporter. Like, he's a big deal. So oh, yeah. ESPN did go to Danbury, Connecticut when they announced this team, and then I'm watching the highlights of the game, and for God's sakes, it took me an hour to just decide if this was real hockey or not. Like, is this, is this good or not? I know. Because the two guys that they interviewed sitting in their lawn chairs in the corridor looked like these guys didn't have enough brain cells to tie their shoelaces, yet they played pro hockey 17 years ago. And then I realized, well, yeah, maybe 17 years ago these guys were in shape. But I tweeted it the other night when I watched the first hour. I'm like, the Danbury Trashers are a grease fire that I cannot turn away from. (laughs) And went and finished watching it, and uh, I'm still trying to figure out what I just watched. But you got to watch it. It's like... (laughs) It's like The Sopranos meets Slapshot. Yes. And I think maybe throw in a throw in Tiger King. Oh yeah. Ah. <laughs> you want to drop that? Uh, Clark's so, just saying that uh, Tiger yeah. King is getting season 2, so what they set up a camera in jail for Joe Exotic. Anyways. Exactly. Anyways, um so, Darren, what are you on Danbury Trash? What are you giving it out well, of they, five? Yeah, that's, I mean, wow. It's a four out of five for me. Part of it is, yeah. is I, I couldn't concentrate because I was the same thing. I'm like, what is happening? Right? Um, <laughs> they said he's the real life Tony Soprano, that they modeled the show after the Sopranos, after this family, which is wild. But I like how, you know, they said that they were just so scared when he'd walk into the dressing room, right? He'd walk into the locker room and they're like, you know, they'd pucker up like this because they're just like on pins and needles. Like, and then when he is on the bench and they're like, yeah, the phone calls for you. They're about to do the anthem and the guy's got the cell phone on the bench. And then he's sitting on the blue line like this because he's got to go fight. It's like you're going to go fight as soon as the, uh, the puck drops and he's just staring. The anthem's going on. Everybody's cheering and he's just staring. I'm like, oh, boy. Like, I don't really remember. The rink remember. is packed. The people are going crazy. The rink is packed, but yet it's pro hockey, and the rink looks like the Lanigan Event Center. Like, four, that? five rows of seats only on one side. Like, I couldn't, but I couldn't take my eyes off it. It was wildly entertaining. Right. Wild. It's a grease fire. Grease fire. Moose, well, I'm not done with the Danbury Trashers. We'll talk to you in a, in a bit, okay? When we come back, Gareth Reese from the World Rugby Sevens. We're broadcasting live from the Beach House in Pompano Beach, Florida. It is Canada's daytime sports talk show on Game Plus Television, YouTube, and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. for Dragon's Maze? This is gonna be awesome! Wow, the line is really long. Mommy, there's no We'll meet up later. How long will you wait? As long as it takes. So you guys are only gonna do this one ride all day? It won't be that long, probably. Mom, 
can you get us food? But wait, are they cutting? Caleb, food is so far away. Should I say something? Daddy, pick me up. Mom! Hey, there's a line here. Daddy, swing That's me. like 20 people. Oh One person holds the line for 20 people? This is bullshit. Don't go there. Go on a real vacation. Go RVing. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rob. Welcome back, everybody. It's Canada's daytime sports talk show live on Game Plus TV from the Pompano Beach House. I'm, I just opened up the Prairie Mobile text line and kaboom. Can somebody research what area code 480 is? Do you guys mind? Can you do 480? From the 480, the only reason Darren Ravel went to Danbury was that ESPN headquarters is located down the road in Bristol. It's a short drive talking about the Danbury Trashers. Uh, listen, Clark's telling me it's Scottsdale, Arizona. Who cares? He was there. Don't be a member of the yeah, but crowd. Yeah, but, yeah, but. No, ESPN was there. Makes it legit. <clears throat> just like the World Rugby Sevens, which, by the way, is only two days away. This weekend in Edmonton, the World Rugby Seven Series features teams from across the globe with action-packed Rugby Sevens matchups. Purchase your tickets today at CanadaSevens.com. Gareth Reese joins us from Edmonton getting ready for this event, the, the likes of which never before been seen. How you doing, Gareth? How, how are plans for the weekend, by the way? Well, pretty good, and uh, thanks for having me. I got one beef for you, man. We brought the whole world of Rugby Sevens here to your great sports city, and you're sitting on a beach in Florida? What's that about? How about that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't really plan that too well. I didn't. But listen, I can tell by the smile on your face that you're ready to rock and roll come this weekend. I mean, it's uh, we've been talking about it for months. It's finally here, basically. So how you feel it? We're super excited. Uh, basically, the top 12 men's teams in the world and four women's teams are going to take over Commonwealth Stadium for Saturday, Sunday. I don't know how many of your fans have seen a, a World Sevens series stop. It's, a, it's like a tournament format, short, 14-minute game, tons of scoring, tons of big hits, tons of action. And it's like uh, two days, all day of uh, whatever you want to do. If you want to have a few drinks, if you want to put a costume on, it's all there. And uh, pretty excited to be in Edmonton this weekend. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got a lot of questions about the game and the sport and the event itself, but my good friend Cameron Hughes, you must know Cameron, the professional fan, Cameron Cheers, has yeah. worked events all around the world. And he says that the World Rugby Sevens is the greatest spectacle in sport. Why is that? What are people going to see this weekend in Edmonton? Well, he's not wrong. It's uh, it's so much more than just what goes on in the field. There's all the fans get into it. We've been in Vancouver for the last five years. We put 70,000 people in there over two days in BC Place. Um, just an awesome experience for kids, for families. If you want to have a few beers with your buddies, um, it's an all-day experience. It's something unlike going to a, a, an Elks game or going to a hockey game. It's just extended over the day, and it's all about the, the characters around the rugby game whether it's national costumes, you got Kenyans, uh, you got South Africans, you got all sorts of different people, as well as the Canadians. And you're also having a good time. And the action's always changing on the field. So you can cheer for Canada, you can cheer for another team. This event, you can cheer for our women's team, we're awesome. So uh, yeah, so much to do. And uh, it's not your, it's more like a festival entertainment product than just some sports game, part of a league. So on Monday, I was reading results of what had just happened with World Rugby Sevens in Vancouver. So was there's an opening leg. Can you explain all that to me? Yeah, sure. I mean, for fans that don't know rugby too well, Rugby Sevens is kind of like um, a beach volleyball to volleyball. There's a full 15 aside rugby, and then Rugby Sevens is the abbreviated version. And that's the version that's in the Olympics for us. So we just went down there. Men made top eight. Women were ninth. Uh, both teams qualified. So pretty exciting. Not the results maybe we wanted. Um, but uh, it's awesome to be, to be in the Olympics. We've had a changeover, and we went in Vancouver last weekend. Um, lots of young Canadian kids, as I said, and the women as well. Uh, South Africa won the thing, and but our guys played great, and some, some guys put their hand up, and I think they could actually challenge for the title here, which would be amazing on Canadian soil to lift the HSBC World Series Cup. I mean, it's pretty rarefied territory. Yeah, I was going to ask you what uh, what is up for grabs with that. So that is the thing. They will be handing out a championship, a trophy here come Sunday night? Yeah, well, a lot of the rest of the world is shut down. So there's an abbreviated tour. Normally, it's a 10-stop tour with cities like uh, Dubai, Hong Kong, uh, London, Paris, uh, Auckland. It's it's all there. Um, but we, uh, we've we got an abbreviated season this year. 
So this will be the second of two events this year, and then they're off to Dubai um, just before Christmas. So there will be a champion uh, declared at the tournament, and it'll be play down format. Uh, Sunday afternoon, you'll have a, a winner here. And, uh, you know, South Africa did it last time, um, and we'll see if our, our men, the Canadian men, can challenge for that cup. Obviously, I broadcast many an event out of Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton. Tell me how that is the perfect yeah. venue for this uh, event this weekend. Well, it's fantastic. Obviously, one of the things that we're all considering without getting too serious is the uh, the COVID situation. So there's lots of space in that stadium. We've, we've set it up so there will be space for fans and social distancing. All the players have been in a bubble. But as I said, it's been quite a logistical thing to get all these teams here to Edmonton, 12 teams from around the world. Um, but they're ready to compete. They're fed up with being in a hotel, just like, you know, all the hockey players and curlers that were here in Alberta. They want to play. So they're going to put on a show. And, um, yeah, we've taken a few extra precautions, just an abundance of caution, really, to make sure that everyone around you is, uh, is double vaccinated and uh, we're all good to go. And there's lots of space to move into. So uh, it's going to be fun. It's not going to be quite uh, uh, the same as pre-COVID, like most things, but we're going to have fans in the stands. It'll be a good time. Well, and a party, yes. And you know what? You've brought it up a couple of times, so let's talk about that before we just talk about the sport of rugby for a second. You're going to have to have proof of vaccination or a negative on-site test. You're going to need to wear masks in the crowd. So can you talk about for those, and by the way, for those that haven't bought single-day ticket passes yet, they are on sale for sixty as low as $60 for a full-day pass. So what can they expect when they come in there on Saturday? Yeah, there's some tickets still available. Uh, CanadaStevens.com is where you go for those. Um, yeah, we're going to take all the regular precautions. Um, you know, we're, we're basically a week ahead of the Elks with these new uh, rules that have gone in place. We're working with the Elks um, in, in that stadium. Um, and you will need to take all the precautions and uh, just play by the rules. That's all, really. Um, so we understand some people aren't into that. And, you know, that's just the way of the, the world. Uh, but we want to have an event. We want to have a safe event for everybody. But we're going to have some fun as well. You may be six feet apart more so than you were before. Um, but uh, we're going to have a good time. Gareth, what is your rugby history in the sport? Well, I grew up on the West Coast and was pretty lucky. Uh, I played for our national team, but played pro over in Europe for about 10 years. Played in sevens down in the Hong Kong sevens. Some of your, your listeners may have heard of that. It's just an incredible event. Um, I was pretty lucky to travel the world and, and got paid uh, to play the game. And now I work for, for the next generation of kids. we got some great athletes, uh, men and women in this country. And Alberta's always provided us great great athletes and they got good programs here so there's a few of the other old boys are playing friday night out at ellersley there's a big classics event out there uh, they got three games going on and all the ex-internationals are coming together to play and uh and then saturday sunday will be all the, the current internationals going at it and uh, giving us a show well i want to i want to end it with this i get imagine that the rugby world is somewhat small so you must know a gentleman by the name of carl fix and he brought me out to the prairie fire in regina for my first live game and i was like what the hell somebody's hurt on the side of the pitch and they're working on him and the play is still going on i mean getting injured isn't anything new in sport but to keep playing around the guy and of course no equipment i'm like these are the toughest this is the toughest sport on the planet am i right well you just mentioned what was it sopranos means slap shot well, this is maybe, I don't know, the, the Elks meet the uh, big slap shot. We, uh, yeah, we don't have any pads on. We're, we, we go at it. But there, there is safety underneath all that. There's just big, clean hits. Uh, Carl Fix knows how to put on an event, and uh, he's passionate about our sport. There'll be tons of people who are, who are passionate about rugby, and hopefully lots of new fans and new families come and check out international sport. We're back on field. If you've missed live sport, you can cheer on Canada and, uh, and other, other national teams. So, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a fun one. There'll be some, some hits, but uh, everyone will be okay. <laughs> I love it. Gareth, this has been great, man. Good luck with it. I'm sorry that I can't be there, but it looks like you're going to have it every year, so I'll be at the next one. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks a lot. appreciate talking to us. You bet. Gareth Reese joining us from the World Rugby Sevens in Edmonton. It's going on this weekend, and they are a partner of this show, along with Explore Edmonton. Most joins me next. We're going to talk about Manscaped today and a lot of other fun things. We're broadcasting live from the Beach House in Pompano Beach, Florida on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You spend the first hour of your vacation at the luggage carousel thinking there's nowhere to go but up. 
But there is a place to go but up, because when you open your suitcase, you find it filled with dolls. Dolls like the ones in that movie that scared you so much you wet your girlfriend's bed. Ah, Marissa, the one that got away. You return the bag to the airport with relief. It lasts until you get back to your room, where a fallen doll waits to greet you. Don't let a suitcase full of dolls ruin your vacation. Go on a real vacation. Go RVing. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back to the RP Show, everybody. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. It's back to school time, and we want to make sure you pack the essentials to have the best year yet. The Manscaped fourth-generation performance package is just that. Things are opening up. Be ready for whatever is in the daily schedule for you. It's the perfect package for your package and includes the brand new Lawnmower 4.0. Fellas, go for the valedictorian of ball trimming and join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com with a promo code RP20. You get 20% off plus free shipping. Was that you laughing, Moose? Somebody uh, broke out laughing there. Yes. What? You hear it every week. It's not new. Not like that, I don't. That was new. <laughs> that was new. We love our Manscaped. Yes, we and do. And I love uh, the folks. I love the folks that support Manscaped because they sponsor both our YouTube channel and uh, national television. Um, how's your last 10 to 15 minutes been, Moose? It's been great. I, I've been on the phone, so, uh, but it's been good. Have you? Yeah. Um, this Mike Rolene from Edmonton, he's asked the same question as yesterday. I'm going to have to reread it. Mike says, good morning, Rod, from beautiful Miami and Moose from the bunker. I was wondering if you guys have been asked, who do you think will first player of Saskatchewan's team, the Seattle Kraken, will be to score the first franchise goal? We answered this yesterday, Mike Rolene from Edmonton. But I said, Eberly, yeah. who did you say, Moose? Do you remember? I, I, I don't remember who I said, but I'll say uh, Jaden Schwartz. I'll say Schwartz. Right. Uh, from Jim in Manitoba on the Jack Eichel thing. You can't trade an injured superstar unless you take less, and the Sabres don't want to take less. Am I being too hard on the Buffalo Sabres? Because I don't think that I am. No, I think you're being fair. Um, he's still a long-term you know, asset for anybody at a high end, so you're not taking less for Jack Eichel. Regarding yesterday's discussion about uh, Jeff Garcia in the Hall of Fame, why isn't he in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame? And I answered it by saying he's got one Grey Cup ring, not two. From the 248, Doug Flutie should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I believe he changed the game in the NFL. We'll talk about that and more next hour. Okay, Moose? You going to stick All around right. after the break? You bet. Okay. It is the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube, and Facebook Live. And we'll see you in hour two right after this. For more Rod Peterson on demand, visit rodpeterson.com.